أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأتي الله أتي الرسول أولو الأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأتي الله أتي الرسول أولو الأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأتي الله أتي الرسول أولو الأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأتي الله أتي الرسول أولو الأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأتي الله أتي الرسول أولو الأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأتي الله أتي الرسول أولو الأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأتي الله أتي الرسول أولو الأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأتي الله أتي الرسول أولو الأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأتي الله أتي الرسول أولو الأمر منكم Let Allah complete His favours upon our soul and bring us into His Divinely Nearness. And that Divinely Nearness is the ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad the nur and khuda. The Prophet is one of the names is nur and khuda, the light of guidance or the guiding light. And we talked the other night and always a reminder these subjects that are so immensely deep that we tafakkur and contemplate that light is a, is a magnetic reality and that when people think only from physicality then these talks and this way doesn't make sense. If they can arise above their physicality and think from the world of light. That Allah give these titles in Nurul Huda that this guiding light and this light of guidance and that that light is magnetic, has an energy, has a juzbah, has a fayyaz and emanation and that this love that we put into it, every love that we put in in life is a We have to be cautious that that which we, we love we'll be with and whom you love you will be with and whom you love will be with you is the secret of magnetism. And that which we direct our light to it, it will magnetically pull us and this is a reality of guidance. So when we want to go deep into the understanding of guidance and why these practices and what's the reality of these associations because the dunya people they say, why do they have to sit so much and praising, why do they have to continuously have awrads and recitations? All of that is developing its understanding that every recitation that you make it's a calling. You're calling to that light, you're calling to the reality of that soul and then from these teachings those lights have magnetic draw to them. Uh, whether we're calling from the names of Allah and we have to understand from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul that even when you call the name of Allah it has to pass through the permission of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad and we described that before a few nights ago that Allah says, if I reveal my speech to the mountain it will be dust. And even Allah described to His Prophet Sayyidina Musa salam that you not only not reveal my speech but you can't even look at me and look to that mountain and see if it's still standing when I reveal my glory upon it. And Sayyidina Musa when he saw even the light of that reality which later is understood in these knots we asked that, as Musa, Ya Musa what did you see? That even the light of Prophet made Nabi Musa qashiya to be dust and completely annihilated. Means that for somebody to think that they can take from the qudra, the energy of Allah is impossible. And the adab for understanding is that every ismullah has to pass through ismul Rasul And that's why we have articles on Nur Muhammad listing the 99 names of Allah and which of the 99 names of Sayyidina Muhammad these names will pass through and these are the keys of our understanding that when Allah want to send His light and power it must pass through the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad 
and from Prophet then down and moving, flowing through towards creation. This becomes the reality of the understandings of guidance that when this light wants to reach to us Allah sends the light to the soul of Prophet So even when we're making our dhikr and we say, Isma Jalala Allah, 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 it must be passing through Nabi Muhammad means then these lights and these energies that coming through us it passes through the reality of Prophet soul and then the light of that energy then comes towards the servant to dress them and bless them. And that's the importance of these understandings. So even when we're making the dhikr of Allah there's a magnetism and to understand the adab of that magnetism that it all must flow through the soul of Prophet Right? Because we said that Allah not on heaven and not on earth but Allah's power is in the heart of His servant. That's what we were talking the other night is Manzil Qur'an. This is the month of Ramadan that Allah to reach to only Allah is outside for us to understand. We are in an ocean of creation. The center and the heart of that creation is Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah defined that for us, I'm not on heaven, I'm not on earth of what you want of your marifah but I'm in the heart of my servant. So we think, oh this means for us but for its haqqaiq is Allah is directing my power is in the heart of my servant known to you as Sayyidina Muhammad that heart is Manzil Qur'an, it's the house of Holy Qur'an. That heart is emanating Qur'an. Allah wants to speak, He speaks through the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad That is the power door, nothing beyond that. When we fully understood that, when we say, Ar-Rahman that the pull that you're asking from Sifat rahman it must be coming through the key of Sayyidina Muhammad Means it moves through the soul of Prophet from that Divinely heart. So means Allah's Qudra is moving, it dresses through a key from the name of Prophet and then begins to move to the servant and dress them and bless them. As a result of even the salawats that we do, the zikrs that we do, all of the associations that we do, these are then magnetically charged. These lights and these energies that we are calling upon, they are like magnets. They begin to draw us into their reality that Allah's lights and attributes and essences, they begin to dress our soul, bless our soul. And they begin to call us into that reality. Means then the most powerful light of that guidance is in when we're saying, Allah, when we leave everything as a distraction on this earth and we call ourselves to Allah then the perfection of faith is that when you believe in Allah but then Allah directs us to Muhammadun Rasulullah because in our life we came to say, La ilaha illallah, there is nothing, there is no one, there is nothing but the Creator known to us is La ilaha illallah. So it negates everything. Allah begins then to direct us to the secret of guidance that you came to my oneness. Now I want you to come to the secret of guidance Nurul Huda in which you begin to say Muhammadun Rasulullah means it's a miftah rahmah, it's the key of Allah's rahmah and mercy. Because as soon as our life opens up with the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah means that now every name and attribute that we recite it's coming from the light of Prophet 
Because the only one who obeys Allah, Ati Allah, is Prophet So every dhikr of Allah is coming through the dress of the light of Prophet and then dressing the servants, dressing creation, dressing every reality. That's why then these associations are immensely powerful. When they sit with this in these zikrs, they sit in this majlis of Salli Ala Nabi they're being dressed by these lights, blessed by these lights and magnetically charged is coming. That's why that holy hadith is a description of that, you'll be with whom you love. That's magnetism, that's a juzba, that's a reality of fires. So all of these words in Arabic, juzba is, is a magne- magnetism, fires is emanation. An emanation, how does that emanation come towards a servant? It's through a magnetic charge. Why doesn't it just dress everyone? Why doesn't the fires just go and, and find its own location or, or erroneously land upon the chair as soon as you move? Fayyaz is not an undirected emanation but it's precisely guided by its magnetic reality. That as soon as you open the magnetic charge within your soul and begin to praise upon Allah begin to praise upon the reality and make salawat and durood al-sharif upon the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad opens for us this reality of magnetism that exists within the energy and the light. So people are wondering like is it a big magnet? No but later they're find that actual magnetism is in light. And then as soon as you activate that magnetism actually that light now is directed specifically to your soul, specifically to your light. That's why as soon as you begin to make your chants you're opening up your magnetic charge. And as a result these names, these attributes and these durood al-sharif are now coming and directing themselves towards the servant. As much as they make zikr, as much as their magnet is, is being drawn to these lights and to these blessings. And as soon as they make salawat on Prophet you're activating the most powerful magnet, the most powerful magnet that you have now the attention of that reality of Prophet Nur al-Huda, what we say Nur al-Huda Shafi al-Wara means all of these salawats, all of these nasheeds were all of these realities in a melodious way that the shaykhs are teaching by these endless and blessed recitations all these haqqaiqs. Nur al-Huda, Shafi al-Wara that as soon as we're reciting these we're activating our magnet towards the greatest magnet of Allah means that light of Prophet becomes active and now begins to draw the servant towards his reality. And the gravitational pull is drawing us. That's why when we understood Allah described I teach you upon yourself and I teach you upon the horizon. Means they'll learn, they'll see the reality within themselves and they'll see the reality upon the horizon. So means then actually the sun, its gravitational pull is the one commanding all our planets. The sun, its gravitational pull is commanding all the planets. The isharat and the command within the sun is holding these planets in their orbit. If the command comes stronger the planets would have moved into the gravitational pull of that sun. Means the secret of their spin and their orbit the secret of their proximity, their dress and their tajalli is all under the command of that sun. Because Allah want us to understand the outside for us to understand the inside. So people whom their mind is narrow in understanding and they say, what are you talking about? Everything is Allah. We said before, don't, don't, 
don't make everything too easy like that. Means you didn't contemplate. Allah wants a salik and a seeker that contemplates His creation. Not just oversimplify and say, this all Allah. But that's not the way of marifah. The way of marifah Allah want you to see the secret within its reality. Say, so once you understand, do you see the secret of that sun? You breathe from it. Anybody has a question? Help me at nurmuhammad.com. Say, no, no, you breathe from Allah. No, no. Allah gave a command to the sun to send a light to have photosynthesis on this earth. As a result, it produces an oxygen for you to breathe. If Allah didn't send that command to the sun and didn't have the green vegetations that would take the sunlight and give to you oxygen, they could have given out carbon monoxide and they would have been like uh, polluted cars that kill you. Which at night some plants in your home you're not supposed to keep at night in your room because they actually put out carbon monoxide not dioxide. Is the dioxide is a poisonous one Hamid or the monoxide? Huh? The monoxide? Yeah. Mono. So it means all of these haqqaiqs and the plants that they give oxygen, other plants at night they reverse their system and they actually take the oxygen and give you poison and if you keep them in your room you become lightheaded. So our, our life and death, everything by Allah but He made this creation of an immense intricacy and as a result of that sun we breathe because of photosynthesis. So that's why on certain times of the year don't cut all the green trees that Satan is influencing you to cut billions of green trees and cutting our oxygen as if you're making a suicide upon this earth. So then this sunlight gives us vision. It comes with a specific spectrum of light as soon as it hits the atmosphere of this earth and give you vision, gives you breath gives us our sustenance. Had the sun come in too strong would have burned all the crops and in the last days the heat of the sun begins to torment the earth because Allah is not happy, right? The atmosphere begins to evaporate and the sunlight begins to burn all vegetation. And Allah describes that in the Qur'an that when all their crops are turned to dust like burnt, everything look like it's burnt. So means till now Allah sent a rahmah, that rahmah of the sun and its understanding, we eat from it, breathe from it, see from it and receive the tajallis and the emanation and the warmth of it. All of that and the sun controls the orbit of all the planets. They're not just randomly moving and choosing the way they want to, sp to move. Allah give the ishara to the sun and the, the sun commands the outermost planet exactly how far it's going to stay away because the juzbah is under control. If the sun turns on its gravitational pull which is its juzbah, its attraction, that planet would move off of its orbit and been directed into the sun. Means everything is under the control of that reality, Allah want us to know why. Because you say, is the sun greater or the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad The sun and the, the soul of Prophet is beyond anything of understanding because all this dunya is made from Nur Muhammad If the sun controls these planets and the sun gives this light, these eyes, this breath, these realities, imagine then the reality of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad that that light comes to us from Allah through the soul and the heart of Prophet and begin to dress you, it begins to bless you, 
It is the secret of the Wi-Fi for all the created universes that Nur Muhammadi is moving the entire universes. Every command of Allah is in those spectrums of light that touch every point of this galaxy to its and this universes to the point in which when Allah creates new universes that light has to give the authority of that reality all its commands and all of its isharats. Everything that coming into existence that Wi-Fi light of Prophet and just for us to understand must be touching everything. <coughs> Means its capacity is something that can't even be understood but we can only get a little sample of it just by looking on the exterior. Well Allah gave that authority to a son and that son is something created and that's why when you put all these teachings together we begin to understand that's created and that's created from a Muhammadan light. If that has that authority imagine what the soul which is the entirety and the haqqaiq of that Muhammadan light. That's why then these are Nurul Huda, these are the lights of guidance, these are the realities of guidance. When we make our dhikr, when we make our associations, when we make our salawat we build this love and love is the thing that develops the magnet, love is the reality of the magnet. We said before if you put your equation what is faith? Faith is a light that enters into the heart and to the soul. It's an event, it's not something that you say you have or someone else says, you have faith. Allah has to grant faith. Faith is a light and that light has to enter the heart and Prophet described, Ya Umar that you have to love me more than you love yourself, He gave the secret of faith. You have to love me more than you love yourself that is the perfection of iman. As a result of that light and that love its equation is magnetic charge. When the light begin to enter from these lights of reality Allah is granting love, when He grants love equals faith, faith equals magnetism. Faith equals magnetism, juzba, rabita. We have all these words, huh? Muraqaba, rabitat, chaturbaum. We have also a muraqaba. I heard it somebody was using it in a sentence and I came into my ear. But all of these are our traditional languages for us to understand that this love, this light and this magnet has to be activated. When they don't have love and their practices are not based on Divine love because they have to have good khuluq, good character. Love answers everything. When you study with the shaykh and you love and you think that you entered into an ocean of love, that love is your discipline. How could you ever harm that shaykh? How could you come against that shaykh? Even every horrible thing you could imagine you think the shaykh did to you in life but because of your servant of love, man ba ishq sadiq budam. You've heard those in songs? That was truthful to love, my allegiance was to love, I abided and upheld the laws of love. Not the laws of people and not the laws of somebody, I didn't do things for other people. But if I was a sadiq for ishq and love, Divine love, we're not talking about relations, we're talking about somebody who used their soul with another soul for the love of Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad They were truthful in love, ma sadiq ishq budam means that my truthfulness to love upheld my honour and my way. Not, not what I claim as my character, not what I claim as my aqeedah, not what I claim as I think I know and somebody else doesn't know. But we were servants of love, 
that's this secret of magnetism and they try their best to uphold the law of love that, Ya Rabbi you granted a love within my heart. They taught me madad and then I fell in love because my heart was activated, my magnet was activated and as a result I was taught with this magnet and this love and this heart of mine, be a sadiq of ishq and love. Don't uphold yourself to what you think is a sharia, what you think is a law, what you think… Whatever you think of laws they could be wrong in your mind and that's why there's a thousand books on every usul and everyone has a different opinion of what that usul means because those are hatta dunya scholars. But the scholars of muhabbat and ishq, the ones of marifa, then Allah asked from them, be sadiq to your ishq, be truthful in your deeds and in your action to your love. And as a result of their love Allah tested them, gave things that were not pleasing to them, gave situations in which they felt that they were betrayed. We know we live through it. And as a result Prophet asked, just be truthful to your love, means what would you do then? You stay quiet, you show the best of manners because this is love, you show the best of character. That no matter what you kept the way of love, the best of character, that answers then everyone's question. With good character you kept the way. You kept the relation, you kept everything because you were truthful in love and that's what's important. Don't, don't ever argue on this aqeedah, that aqeedah, it means nothing if they're not truthful in love. It means they, they fell in love with Allah they fell in love with Sayyidina Muhammad and then everything from a lesser understanding, everything from dunya whatever they were taught. At least they understood, Ya Rabbi that I became an ashiqeen, a lover of Prophet Let me to uphold my truthfulness and my good character for love. And that was their aqeedah, that was their whole deen, that was their whole way. It answers every situation in their life. So then it's not understood how somebody thinks they can be pious and they begin to attack and begin to, to get into hate and then begin to be go beyond hate and begin to attack. Means this is that the reality of ishq and muhabbat. When Allah opened for that means He opened for the servant now from that love open for them, magnetism, open for them iman and faith. If the servant has divine love is a gift, a light that entered into the heart means then that servant has been granted iman and faith and real iman, not self-professed iman, real iman in which they've been tested and tried and they always come back up with the truthfulness of love that they will not harm because of their allegiance to Prophet in ishq and muhabbat. And as a result Allah made their hearts to be a magnet and magnetism means they have an immense magnetism and as a result of their magnetism they are receiving the fires of those whom are above. Means the awliya of the much higher realities and realms because that's a Divine magnetism, that's a Divine magnet of ishq and love, they receive immense amounts of fires and lights and energies and blessings and knowledges. Because those are the servants also of love, they're all magnetized, they have immense juzbah, they're all emanating from that emotion and that ocean. So imagine then as soon as the associations begin like the, the songs of the birds that it describes that all the birds are sitting in a beautiful paradise, these are all the big awliya and they see another majnoon entered into their garden and they begin to sing. Because they see us that these are ashiqeen and these ashiqeen are entering into their zikr and their association and then that magnet begins to pull their fires and bring that fires into the association, those whom watching and those whom online. And that's why when they teach then make your heart a magnet, begin to open up your love, begin to be truthful in love 
There's no arguing over this aqidah, that aqidah, petty issues and, and bad character. Just be truthful in love, keep your symbol of love, have the character of love that for the sake of love I'm keeping the way, keeping the respect, keeping this adab. As a result Allah begins to send light into their heart. That's why they speak, other people don't have any understanding what they're talking about. Where you came with this? How you go from this? Because they don't have that love, they don't have that light of faith like that and as a result they don't have a magnet that's attracting these realities. So those whom have that reality they teach their students, begin to open your love, begin to open your light within your heart, begin to make your connection. If you don't practice these realities and begin to connect, how are you going to activate the magnet within your heart? As soon as your heart has that magnet it begins to attract these lights from the light of the shaykh. So then there's millions of magnets or thousand magnets out there beginning to activate. As soon as they activate they're pulling the fires from the shaykhs in this world of love. So they pull from the power sources they have to bring and as a result everyone else feeding off of their light and with their juzba pulling with that love and that's the reality and the haqqaiq of Prophet describing in his holy hadith that you be with whom you love. So means this station of be is what's important, how to be in that love, how to nourish that love, how to bring about that love and that reality, it will become the magnet of your guidance in life. As a result of this ishq Everything in life is like obstacles but when your magnet is strong and connected to their source, connected to the heart of Prophet and what happens? And that's what we described the night before like the child, childish games that we had when we were young, that that magnet is now pulling and drawing. Its charge is so strong that it begins to pull. Imagine that it's pulling us over every difficult terrain, every mistake, everything that we're doing, that magnet's charge is so strong that it's pulling us. When we don't know what choice to make of left and right the magnet pulls, they come and all the choices become more and more correct, more and more correct with such an immense blessings, immense fires. That, that if you were to look yourself coming in you would say that this is something closed, I no way I can pass it. But the magnet it opens every closed issue, it begins just pulling your reality towards it and everything closed becomes open, every obstacle becomes attainable. Means there's nothing that can stop when the call is from Allah and hits to the Muhammadan heart when the fires and emanation in the call of Sayyidina Muhammad is coming, nothing can stop it, nothing can change it. And this is the azimat of Allah azimat of Sayyidina Muhammad and ulul amri minkum whom Allah gave this dress and gave these blessings. We pray that from the lights of Nurul Huda that Allah guide us, bless us to the immensity of the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad and those whom are holding and custodians of that love upon this earth that they activate the magnet within our hearts and call us into that presence over every obstacle and every difficulty, everything blocking us and the fear that our eyes may see that this is something blocking, this is something impossible, this is something you know I can't attain at my age and Allah is reminding that, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel means your faith and trust is in Allah If Allah give the command to the Muhammadan heart there is nothing that will stop it, nothing that cannot be done by Allah and every grace and blessings and emanation to dress upon the servant. Subhan rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.